Hi and welcome back to the cyber panel tutorial series. In the last video we saw how to create the new sudo user and then we also logged in with that user. So throughout the next videos we're not going to use root for anything. So I can just close this because we're done with root. We will not be using root throughout this tutorial again for anything else and until we get to the part about installing cyber panel. But for now we'll only be using the user that you created and if we need to do anything anything that is that requires root access then we'll use sudo so in this video what we're going to do is we're going to see how to set up ssh key pairs and then we're going to set them up so that we can log in with our private ssh key so you're going to see how to do that if you are on windows i did a video about that using party and partygen you can find that and follow along with that within my videos in the correct playlist if you're on Linux or Mac, then this video is for you. You can follow along with me on Terminal. And in the end, you're going to have your SSH keys set up so that you can use them to log in. And then we are also going to disable root login and password authentication in upcoming videos. So right now, let me just come to the browser and I'm going to follow this post that I wrote recently. If you go to bizanosa.com. So this is a post, but if you if you search you can search you can search here for ssh keys enter and generate ssh keys and use them that is the correct post so this is the one that i'm going to follow as i set up my ssh keys and you should also come to this link and i will add this link in the description if it is not there just remind me and i will add it for you so there are two ways in which we, you can add this you can use the default way whereby you just press enter and the keys are going to be the keys are going to be created for you but i'm assuming that you probably have multiple servers you'll be setting up or you already have some ssh keys that you've already set up on your computer so let me just show you the second way, which is the method that I prefer, because with this method, you can create multiple SSH keys and you'll know how to log in with the different keys. So with this method, you'll name your SSH keys, whatever you want. You can give it a different name. You don't have to use the default settings. So first of all, the steps, you're going to generate the keys. And then after you generate the keys, you'll add the, you'll add the public key to the server. So two keys are going to get generated, public and private, and both of them will be will be on your computer but the private key is the one that you used to log in we'll need to add the public key to the server and then once we add it we're going to change the permission for this this is where we're going to add the ssh key on our server and then once we do this we're going to log in just to confirm that you can log in okay so let's get started and the first thing i want to do here is uh, I, I need to open a new tab so just remember that right now at this point we are in our server okay but this process the generation of the ssh keys we are going to need to do this on our local computer so just come here in terminal and open up a new tab you can even log out if you can't open another tab just log out of your server for now and so this is done on your local computer we're going to generate the ssh keys so let's come back here and you can see that here I've not added sudo to generate this directory. Make sure you don't add sudo, okay? Because when you use sudo to generate your keys, every time you want to log in, you're going to need to use sudo. Personally, I usually use sudo when generating the keys because it adds another security on my computer. So if you log, if you find access to my computer, you won't be able to, to log in without knowing my current password on my computer right now. So if you want to use sudo for all these other steps just know that you'll have to use sudo even when you're logging in into the server you'll need to do sudo ssh into the server for this i'm just going to do it without sudo so if you want to use sudo you'll start using sudo from here not from here okay from here you're just making a directory that is access that is accessible so first we're going to create this directory and inside of this directory this is where we're going to store our this is where we're going to store our keys. So you can see this was a sample that I just added here for called Vault Vesta. But we're going to rename it. Let's come here. I've copied that. I want to make a directory. So the first step, I will make this directory. And let's call it Cyber Tutorial. If you're 
if you go into your folders inside of SSH, you enable hidden folders, you're going to find this folder inside of the SSH folder. So the next process, let's generate the key. So SSH keygen, you can use this to generate your SSH on Linux or Mac. So just an explanation, SSH keygen, this is the one that will generate our key. And then this, this tells, tells the system that you want an RSA key, the different types of keys you can generate, but that's the one we're going to generate RSA. And then this, just the, the bits, so we're going to generate a 4096 bit key. There's also 12 something, 2040, 2048 keys, but you're going to generate 4096. And then this is just a comment, dash C, this is just a comment. And I'm just adding an email there, but it's just a comment. And dash F, so this is where we want to store it, okay? This is going to tell the system that we want to store it here. So I will copy this and i want to put it i want to put it in a text editor then paste and uh, there's something that i want to change here the name of the folder we we created the folder called cybertoot copy we'll come in here and the name of the folder we'll change it and then this, this is going to be the name of the keys. So the private and the public keys, these are the names, okay? So here, you can see we're not using the default. The default are usually just ID, RSA. But for us, we're going to use a different name. So you can just call it, you can just call it first server, RSA, or like that, okay? And that's just okay. So at this point, if you want to use sudo, you can use sudo, but just know that once you start using sudo, you're going to need to use sudo throughout for the next processes. I, I hope you understand what I mean. So for me, I'm just going to paste in this and then enter. So the next process, you need to enter a passphrase. So this is also important. This is like, this is like a password for your key. So if somebody gets access to your private key and they try to use it to log into your server, they will need to know this passphrase. So just make sure you add this and and I'm going to add one myself. And then enter the passphrase once again. All right. So our public key and the private key has been created and I want to copy I want to copy this because I'm going to use them to log into my server. So make sure you copy it and save it somewhere. You should probably save it somewhere that you won't ever lose it. Just so it can help you to remember. So once we have generated the key, the next process for us is now to add the public key to the server. So if you want to add your, pub your public key to the server and you follow the second method in this post, this is how you're going to do it. In the first method, you're just going to do SSH copy ID and that is going to work. You're just going to do SSH copy ID and then you're going to add your, the user and your IP address there. But for us, we're going to need to add the identity. So the identity, this is just a flag that tells the system the exact key that we want to add. So let me copy this one, which has an example already. So I'm just going to click on that to copy and I will bring it back to the text editor because I want to edit it before I put it on terminal. Right, so this is this is the path to your private, to your public key, okay? So just know this is a path to your public key and this just means this is home. In Linux, this just means this is the current home user. So like in this case, you can see the current home user is that. Instead of typing all this, you'll just replace that with a tilde. So I'm going to, what do I need to change here? Let me just copy all from here, Cybertooth. So the only thing I changed here was Cybertooth, right? So the rest will probably just be the same, will definitely just be the same. So I'm going to, I'm going to change Vault Vesta, which is the directory, which is the only thing I changed. If you change anything else, make sure you change it appropriately. All right, and then here, this is the new user 2020. And then this is your IP address, the IP address for your server. So let's come back and I'm going to copy that. And I will put it in text, in the text editor. There we go. And then we paste, all right? 
So if you don't want to, if you just want to copy and paste thing, you can also do this, copy. And then just come in here and copy this. The one with .pub, that is a public file. The one without an extension, that is a private key. And then you add. So this and this is just the same thing, but I'm going to take that one. And then I'm going to copy. I will come back here. So just remember this is still on your local computer. Don't do this on your server. Do this on your local computer. So I will paste. You can see everything is getting done for us. All right. So enter the password for this user. So the user that you created that you want to add the SSH key for, that's the one you add the password. So for me, let me add the password. Okay, now everything is set. So the next thing we, we have to try to do is to try to log in to our server to make sure that everything is working well and we can log in via SSH. So to log into your server, you're going to do SSH, SSH, and then you also, you also need to tell, you also need to tell the SSH, SSD that you want to log in via, via SSH keys. All right. So just something here. If you are following along with me and you're on a Mac, make sure that you have SSH copy ID installed. If you don't have it installed, you can install it using Brew and Brew is a way for you to install various applications on a Mac. So just search for, search for Homebrew, install it and then use Brew install SSH copy ID. Or there's also another post I did for the Windows guys. If you don't do this or these fields, you can also add your, you can add your public SSH key by literally copying it into your server okay you can go into your server and then you just copy it in there so there's a post i did about that if you go to if you look at the if you look at the video i did for partygen you'll find it there so okay before i log in let me change the permissions for the permissions for my authorized keys so the the Linux rules is usually that this needs to be at least 600 or anything higher. So if it is not, you're going to receive errors when you try to log in using, when you try to log in, if you set up a search and you try to log in and you receive any errors, make sure you change the permissions. So I'm going to paste that in there. I'm not even going to do anything else. Just paste it because I know I don't need to, I don't need to edit anything. So I will enter. So actually this, I need to do this on the server, not here. So before I do this, let me see if I can log in with my SSH keys just yet. Because if I can log in with the SSH keys, well and good. So log in via SSH. Let's come in here and we're going to copy this, okay? Copy. And I will come back here and... Let's see, which is our IP. Control V. And then this is the identity. So the public file for us, it's this one. So I'm just going to copy it there. Copy and let's come back here. Open up a new tab of terminal. I will paste that in there. And you see it requires the passphrase that you set up for your private key. All right, so now you're logged into the server using your SSH keys. So let's change the permissions for this. Apparently, I didn't receive any error. So probably the permissions are not too bad. But if the permissions are too bad, you probably won't be able to log in. So let's change the permission. And we're going to change the permission for SSH directory and this file. This is where all your public, all your public keys are kept. So I will copy that and I will just put 
where we are logged in this is where we are logged in via ssh so i will paste in that So that's all that we need to do in this video, nothing else. We just need to set up SSH keys and you've seen how to do it the right way. So the beautiful thing about the way that I've shown you how to do it is that you can create multiple keys for different users, for different servers, and you can and you can group all of them in different directories. So you don't have to do it the default way and most tutorials online show you how to do it the default way. If you want to change the name of the keys, this is how you're going to do it. This way you can create multiple keys on the same Linux computer or on the same Mac computer and you don't and you won't receive any problems because if you try to do it this way, the first way you will replace your keys and if you replace your keys, you lose access to the server that uses those keys. So in this video you've seen how to set up SSH keys and in the next video let's see how to in the next video let's come back and we're going to if you scroll up here there's something else that i did and that is disable we need to disable root login and we also need to disable password authentication so we're going to do that when we come back in the next video i'll see you in the next video if you get lost feel free to reach out i will see how to assist you see you in the next video